Good afternoon. Um, thank you for joining me at um, at this um, uh, Wednesday webinar. Um, probably I'll I'll put the slides on just to um, I don't know if you can see the slides or not. Let me just uh, put my camera off. Um, okay. So uh, my name is Al Hajj Ben Khalifa. I'm a professor of computer science at Staffordshire University, and uh, I'm giving this webinar as part of um, our weekly Wednesday Wednesday webinar series. And the talk today is going to be about um, working in the cloud, the necessary digital transformation. I have given um, a modified kind of um, uh, presentation um, um, on this uh, back in December, beginning of December, before the actual um, 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 COVID-19 outbreak. Um, and um, it was, you know, it was, it was, I gave it to a bunch of business uh, businesses around Staffordshire County, and um, I thought. This time is, is is a perfect time as well to um, to 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 um, to send some messages um, to the attendees and to the world about the the necessity the necessity of um, adopting cloud computing technologies uh, for the, for future this any for any future this digital transformation strategies. So um, just to take the next slide, it's not moving. Okay, so this is my contact details for anyone who's, uh, who wants to contact me after the um, um, the talk. I think this will be recorded and put on YouTube as well. So if anyone wants to um, um, uh, get in touch with me for any of the you know for more information or to discuss any of the areas that I cover in the slides, please feel 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 welcome to um, um, use these contact details. So um, at Staffordshire University, I am the um, um, the director of the Cloud Computing and Applications Research Group, where we cover um, a number of research areas. Uh, I'm not going to go through these because they're quite technical, um, but these are the things, sort of things that we do as researchers to um, make technology as invisible as possible to you um, as customers uh, or cloud users and also to deliver the best services. But there will be aspects of this research I'm going to touch on, such as the cloud security and um, data governance. So I thought the best start probably to start my um, um, talking about um, um, digital transformation is to start from the UK digital strategy, where it focuses on actually seven areas: data um, um, being, you know, being all driven by the um, um, data, um, uh, data these days, and you know, the data-driven economy and all these things. So, this uh, data has been highlighted as one of the main pillars of the um, UK digital um, uh, strategy. Um, digital government is in terms of how to how the government can provide services. Um, in, in, in a digitally enabled approach. Um, it was interesting to read them, um, uh, the, the government definition of digital government on the, the digital strategy, um, giving a very simple definition of providing online services for, um, uh, for citizens. While I think digital government actually can, can go beyond just providing um, online services. Uh, safety and secure cyberspace, obviously that's um, an important, if we, are, if we are online, we have to ensure security. Um, so the National Cyber Security Center is, is one of the initiatives that the government has started recently that actually looks after um, 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 or they launched a number of initiatives, uh, cyber security awareness initiatives and tools and, 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 and um, that can help businesses and uh, as well as um, uh, individuals to stay safe online. Connectivity is, is to do with the infrastructure where, where we are all, all connected through um, digital means. And the digital skills inclusion obviously is to provide um, as much awareness and skill and, and training and knowledge to um, um, to actually um, be able to deal with them um, uh, the digital um, kind of um, requirements. Uh, the two areas that um, that are very relevant to um, to my talk today is the the digital sector and the wider economy. So the digital sector in the digital strategy is about the IT sector is about um, uh, 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 companies um, who um, uh, who become or, or are already IT uh, service providers or are actually building to be an IT service providers. Those are IT businesses. While the wider economy, when it comes to the UK digital strategy, is about the adoption, is the adoption of digital uh, in businesses. So those are two different things. And my most, or the biggest interest in this talk is about the adoption of digital enhance digital transformation. So the UK seems to be doing very, very well, actually, when it comes to the IT sector. UK is one of the biggest economies, in fact, when it comes to IT sector. However, it's still doing poorly when it comes to digit, digital adoption. And that's where it takes us to the next slide, where um, 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 it, it gives some information in terms of where 
um, um, uh, the digital sector is booming in the UK that um, in 2017 um, generated a, a record of 4.5 billion in venture capital investment. However, uh, the UK still falls behind in terms of technology adoption. Okay, and um, that could be due to um, the weak capital investment in in in, the, in in trying to get businesses to um, adopt digital, and also it could be through the delayed introduction of digitization compared to other countries such as Germany and France. So when it comes to specific areas of digital adoption, UK businesses perform poorly um, in the integration of digital technologies in core businesses such, um, and processes such as ERP, um, CRM and supply chain management with a significant gaps actually in the adoption of the next generation um, and emerging digital technologies such as IoT, robotics or artificial intelligence. Um, so, in a nutshell, UK um, 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 is, is performing very well when it comes to technology creation, but not so well in the technology adoption, um, specifically for SMEs. Right. There's a bit of delay on the um, slides. Okay. So, um, this graph here just um, just emphasize what I said previously in, in, in the previous slide, uh, where it shows how UK is compared to uh, France and Germany. And you can see um, that UK is behind on um, uh, several areas when it comes to technology and, and digital adoption, such as the use of enterprise resource, uh, in, enterprise resource planning software and customer relations, relationship management software and supply um, and sharing of supply chain management information. So you can see that UK is way uh, behind uh, Germany in that, in that sense. Um, this table here shows, this comes from um, um, uh, an article um, that, that was on the um, uh, finance in the future. Um, and it's talking about how much the UK could have made uh, in five years if, um, in terms of uh, increased productivity, um, if, if um, um, there's more of technology or digital adoption. And you can see this, this is only for SMEs, obviously. And you can see for um, 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 SMEs with no employees or unregistered, it's like uh, one person, maybe a freelancer or something like that, um, that the, the increase in turnover because of adopting digital technologies or digital, uh, it could get to 6 point, uh, 0 0.6 billion per year. And you go down to, in terms of the next category of SMEs is um, uh, with, with, with no employees registered, 2.2 .2 billion per year, one to nine employees, 3.9 billion per year, small businesses, 3.8 billion, medium, 1.4 billion. And if we um, add that up um, uh, for all SMEs, um, they could make an increase in turnover of 11.9 billion, which uh, um, um, adds up to um, 57 billion uh, pounds uh, in over five years. That's, that's the potential increase in turnover if UK SMEs actually have adopted or adopting um, digital uh, and digital technologies. So the UK has done a lot of as a government to, um, um, to, to encourage businesses and organizations to adopt digital technologies, but it's still falling behind in terms of some areas such as um, skilled workers. There's still a lot of work to be done in that area, although there's a lot of efforts and initiatives to, um, uh, to fulfill that requirement. Regulations that keep space with technological change. We know as researchers that um, regulations are are usually um, the one that um, 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 delays in terms of technology and digital adoptions for uh, uh, many reasons. But there is a lot of efforts again done in that in that aspect to cope with um, uh, these changes. Research and development. I mean, whatever the investment research and development is still not enough. But I think there's um, uh, 1.3 billion pounds um, a year in digital um, research and development, um, uh, of which 600 million pounds is through Innovate UK. Uh, digital Catapult is another um, um, entity which supports digital adoption through um, focusing mainly on data-driven, connected, intelligent, immersive, mainly in digital manufacturing, healthcare, and creative technologies. Um, there's a lot of funding through U uh, UK research innovation um, and research councils in, in, in general. Um, and also there's some um, uh, funding available in the Industrial Strategy Challenge Fund. Um, but despite all these investments in um, digital other green technologies, the UK remains behind, lagging behind um, um, some other countries when it comes to um, um, adopting new technologies and being digital. Um, 
so digital transformation um, is becomes um, somehow a very important uh, metric that actually um, that companies get evaluated against these things. How much digital you are, okay, as as a business, and um, um, digital transformation here is 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 a model that um, encourages um, uh, businesses to uh, transfer from traditional ways of doing a business into um, 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 technology enabled approaches. And the benefits of that um, actually are can be tremendous, um, covering areas of customer experience, product and service innovation, uh, distribution and marketing and sales, digital fulfillment, um, risk optimization, enhanced corporate control. When we talk about digital transformation, we have to consider the three areas of tools, people, and processes. That's where if you are drawing, if you're making any, or if you're building the digital transformation, you have to build this digital transformation between these um, three main areas. Um, digital transformation becomes very important um, to fulfill what we call the digitally conscious customer. Our customers now, they become very, uh, digitally conscious and um, and therefore this is forcing a number of companies actually to um, adopt some kind of digital transformation um, um, business model. The shocking statistics is that the digital transformation of the UK businesses is still um, very immature. We're talking about less than 20% of business of UK businesses have digital transformation strategy. Okay, so they may be um, adopting some digital um, um, uh, kind of um, approaches or models or tools, but in terms of uh, it's very ad hoc. So they don't actually have a digital transformation strategy. Um, these are some of the trends. If you type on digital transformation trends, um, these will be the, the top ones there um 5g bringing your own device which is very relevant these days you know when, when it comes to working remotely um cloud computing and blockchain chatbots data analytics and ai um gdpr ar vr and mr so, um, um, augmented reality virtual reality and uh, mixed reality uh, iot or internet of things and x as a service the last one is about ceo taking the lead that's very important the ones that i put in bold I'll try to actually cover in the in the in the next slides. So it's cloud computing, GDPR, and um, X as a service, and CEO leading the lead, uh, make taking the lead. So what is cloud computing? Cloud computing simply is a set of hardware, networks, computation interfaces, uh, where we deliver computing as a service. So it's an outsourcing, if you can say, in terms of your computing. Um, um, components which 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 I just mentioned there so um, everything is outsourced to um, a third party um, uh, uh, organization which is at the end of the day is another data center controlled by a third party so cloud computing is um, there are three delivery models of cloud computing uh, there's the infrastructure as a service uh, where you where, where you can have control on um, 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 as, as a user you, you can have control on the uh, virtualization operating system and so on the um, the platform as a service where actually you can develop your own applications in in, in, in the in the cloud and SaaS where you actually use a third-party software um, um, as a service you have no control you're just using the software so there are also four maybe three main um, uh, cloud deployment models private cloud public cloud and hybrid cloud uh, the public cloud is usually when you um, are happy to share your data or you put you don't you share your data in the it's not in the public domain but it's actually you are sharing resources in the cloud for the data so that's if the data is not very sensitive a lot of people tend to use public cloud for that if the data is a bit sensitive they tend to use a private cloud where you don't have you don't need to share to have shared resources in the cloud hybrid cloud is basically when you have to use both public cloud and private cloud 93 percent of organizations that have implemented or are planning to implement digital transformation strategies say that a cloud is critical um, or important um, uh, this figure was much lower at the time where cloud actually was um, um, emerging back in 2008, 2009, and, and so forth, um, because of the, the biggest fear of, of adopting cloud is uh, security, which I'm going to um, um, tap into it again um, uh, later in the slides. So this is the uh, the different areas I mentioned here. This is the it shows the difference between on-premise infrastructure, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and um, um, software as a service. So you can see here the areas where, uh, in blue, is where you can actually you manage as the as the um, 
the, the service um, holder and the, the areas in gray where the cloud provider manages for you. Um, cloud computing adoption has been going really high in the in, in last years. Um, obviously, in the last couple of months, it's even much higher. But you can see the leading players here, AWS, Amazon AWS, would be, would be the leader in, in cloud uh, uh, business uh, in market, um, followed by Microsoft Azure, although it's behind, but it's growing fast in a faster pace, um, um, you know, uh, followed by Google Cloud and so on. So we can see that um, there is um, um, a huge kind of um, um, adoption rate in, in cloud um, um, services. Um, 78 percent of organizations use some form of cloud services so we're like web hosting email e-commerce collaboration services so they are not entirely in the cloud they're just using only some um, some some uh, some forms of cloud services and 65 percent of organizations foresee to move entirely to the cloud so we have they have all their applications all their serve all their business services are in the cloud why why should we actually adopt the cloud um, so these are some of the drivers why we should invest in cloud um, provisions. So flexibility of the delivery model. So that's I mentioned about those delivery models, SaaS, IS, and PaaS. So you, you, there is a flexibility in terms of um, 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 adopting any of those at any time and for what um, for, for the needs that suits you that suits your requirements. Scalability. That's a very important thing. As you don't have to worry when you are in the cloud, you don't have to worry about um, um, resources. So you can scale up and down based on your needs and based on your growth. And, uh, and paying only per, per use. You don't have to pay for the fixed kind of resources. Um, so through the cloud, it enables innovation. We've seen many, many cloud, um, uh, cloud adopters who uh, through the cloud, they became more innovators. In a sense, they created new services, new value chains uh, that actually uh, give them a competitive advantage. Uh, it enhances business continuity. We can see that quite clearly in the um, um, uh, COVID-19 outbreak, um, how businesses continue, most businesses at, at least, continue to actually um, um, uh, operate uh, remotely. Um, um, and, and, um, and it allows those businesses to actually, um, some business actually grow even um, uh, further du during this um, uh, COVID-19 um, um, outbreak. And improving customer services, obviously continuity means your customer services improved as well, but customer service it can be improved in different ways, and that's where the um, um, innovation can be can can take a place well, with the cloud adopters. More than seventy percent uh, of of cloud adopters report that cloud save their organization time. So um, that that's quite evident in research. So again, this, this is another it just shows the um, um, it shows the um, the benefits of cloud computing. Um, working collaboratively is something that we can see these days during this uh, lockdown, um, that we are using different cloud-based tools like Zoom or Microsoft Teams or um, 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 alike um, um, to actually um, um, work together, do Teams and actually do, do deliver projects in different, actually different sectors, okay? Price flexibility, the infrastructure cost saving, uh, resource pooling, and, and so on, okay? So it's are these some of the benefits of cloud computer, which, which I mentioned in the previous slide. On the left-hand side, it just shows some of the um, forms of cloud uh, service that companies uh, are mostly adopting, like email and web presence and, and so on. Okay, so there are some examples of cloud provisions. Um, some of them you may be familiar with, uh, familiar with, and others you may not be familiar with. Uh, but Microsoft Office 365, for example, um, is a suite of Microsoft tools, including Microsoft Office tools, where actually you don't have to now to, to actually have or install the Microsoft Office. It's all available in the cloud for you if you subscribe to it uh, with a different kind of pricing model to what we used to when we buy licenses. Um, Dropbox, for those who use it for storage, or Google Drive. Um, Google Drive now becomes um, a, a rescue, actually, uh, or even Dropbox sometimes, uh, a rescue for many businesses to uh, to continue operating um, um, during this lockdown, where you can actually they can share documents and they can work on documents together, especially if these documents need to be edited by multiple people. Um, tools such as Zoom, that's, um, um, that's really booming in terms of um, 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 uh, people using it uh, these days for um, uh, video conferencing um, it's 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 um, actually number one now in the market in terms of um, usage okay followed by microsoft teams 
Uh, cloud computing comes with challenges like any other new emerging technology. Um, and these are some of the um, um, uh, challenges listed here. Governance, uh, lack of resources and expert, uh, in terms of resource and expertise, in terms of people, uh, trained, skilled um, uh, people uh, in the area. Um, managing cloud spend, there are there is, uh, has always been uh, difficulties actually in having um, uh, uh, pricing models or standard pricing models. It's quite challenging when you are looking the cloud. That's something that can take a long time to um, um, to actually figure out with your cloud provider. Uh, cloud migration uh, can be a challenge as well in terms of how you move your um, your your data and your services from on premises to uh, 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 to the cloud. Uh, there are different protocols, different methodologies for that, but it's still challenging, uh, and it's on a case by case basis basically. Uh, security and compliance. So um, it's interesting that when you, if you if you um, search for cloud challenges ten years ago, um, uh, the first that comes to the top is is security. Now security you can see here comes. Um, 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 Fifth in, in the list there doesn't mean that we cloud does not have a um, um, security issues still have some security issues but um, in terms of the, it's, it's down tuned somehow in terms of um, how important it is and that takes me to my next slide which um, I have um, uh, argued for um, at, at, at the time when cloud was emerging and when people was not actually were somehow some very hesitant to to adopt the cloud because of security and uh, that's a statement I used to say in my in my talks at that time. Um, that security, that security uh, is can be a myth in the cloud. And the example I'm going to go very quickly here is uh, the project that we have done um, back then, about eight, seven, eight, nine years ago. Um, and it's about um, um, a project that was funded by Innovate UK, which about which was about delivering digital forensics uh, services, uh, um, a, a digital forensic investigation as a cloud service. Um, it was a very disruptive uh, model at that stage, but obviously there was an issue with adoption in terms of um, you know, when it comes to security. Uh, because at that time, as I mentioned, when you um, try to look into the challenges of cloud computing, the first thing that comes up first is security, okay? And that was scares people more. But what we realized then, and what is evident now, is that security challenges in the cloud has been mostly uh, user perception based. So a lot of people did not actually understand what are the security challenges in the cloud, um, and, but it was, was just perception that they, get, they can gather from what they read from the white papers or, 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 or so, because the data, because it's simply the data is not in there. We're not used, at that time, we were not used to put data somewhere else. It's, you know, we, we used to store data in our hard disks and, um, and, and we process it the way we want in our, in our own um, kind of uh, resources. Now, moving the data to the um, um, to a uh, third-party data center um, scares people. Um, and the argument that we were given at that time, actually, well, not not all companies, actually, IT IT expert companies, not all companies have the um, resources to employ IT specialist people uh, or security specialist people or, or staff to actually take care of their security, and therefore um, adopting or moving their service to the cloud. Could be more secure because the cloud provider would have the resources, the experts to take care of their data and take care of their uh, kind of infrastructure on their behalf 24/7. Uh, and that was the argument we were giving. But at that time, actually, we came we came with that notion of uh, security by design, as you can see on the um, uh, 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 bottom right here. Security by design, where we actually de designed our solution wrapped up with security and that security by design is coming up only these days last couple of years now as as um, a very kind of um uh, um a big research area uh by some that we came 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 with in terms of a solution to to, to this problem uh, a few years back um so what we have done to our user at that time it was the um, um new scotland yard and, and europol um and is is we have classified basically a, a number of uh, I mean, kind of all security concerns in our platform. We were, we were going to develop this um, digital forensic gateway that's a cloud-based uh, service. So we had to classify all the security problems uh, of the platform um, in different ways. And we created this framework of classification. And then we created this matrix, okay, where we have defined every single uh, security concern that we can actually can encounter in this platform. Um, uh, giving it a color code with green, that means we have met that security concern. Orange, 
um, uh, we have not met it. We have not met it all, but we have met it partially because that could be due to lack of investment or lack of technology. And um, uh, red, that means we have not met it again. That could be a lack of the available technology. We're using the best practice, but it's still not sufficient or lack of investment that we need to invest more money to get better solutions. And the purple is that not, not applicable because not all security concerns are applicable to all applications. And with this matrix, obviously this is just a snapshot of a matrix, this much deeper matrix there to show all the security concerns. And this matrix makes it easier for the um, users to actually see the actual concerns in cloud and, um, and to mitigate them if they need to mitigate them. But at the end of the day, as I mentioned before, um, when you outsource your um, um, IT to, 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 to cloud, and you have specialist people to take care of it, and that's the that's the the concept we come back with. So um, then, when it comes to security approach that we we take in our research group here, and I think what what, what should everyone take into consideration when it comes to um, 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 securing your system um, is to look at the three areas: process, technology, and people. Where people here forms the actually the most important aspect. And you can see from the pie chart on the left hand side that education and awareness makes most of the um, um, challenges uh, when it comes to security okay, because you can have the best technology but if you don't have skilled people to um, know how to use that technology they can, you can still have breaches or security breaches um, um, you can have the best technology but if you don't have um, a, a, a governance framework uh, or governance frameworks for your data then you know it's easy to get security breaches or if, if it happens it's very difficult to identify where the security breach is and how it comes uh, or how it comes um, uh, through. Um, we know that uh, we can avoid many uh, uh, security uh, kind of breaches if we follow basic hygiene, security hygiene. Um, and the statistics says that 80, 85 percent of security problems could be avoided by simple uh, uh, kind of um, um, basic security hygiene that people can, can actually follow. Um, and our approach to security that way follows the same approach that I mentioned about digital transformation. So if you're doing this transformation, part of it, obviously, you have to look into security. And if you look into security, you have to actually look into security from these angles, people, process and tools. Um, for the uh, people side, when it comes to security, we have uh, together with Staffordshire Police, we have developed an initiative that was launched back in October 2018, which is a cyber champion in the workplace, where actually we um, uh, uh, we train uh, people from around, mainly businesses uh, from around Staffordshire. We have trained more than 400 uh, businesses um, until until now um, on on how to actually um, uh, handle threats um, in a way that you don't have to be um, an expert, a security expert. Um, this is the concept is very similar to the first aider concept. So you're not an expert, medical expert, but you can actually give a, a first line emergency kind of um, aid to, um, uh, to, to, to people um, and when, when needed. So the cyber champion in the workplace comes to um, uh, with a similar concept where you don't have to be an expert in security, but you can actually support your organization um, um, to avoid or actually deal with a cyber incident if, if if it happens in your organizations. So I, I, I encourage you here to um, look into this um, um, initiative and see if you can subscribe to it uh, for future um, training. This training is fully uh, acad academically accredited by uh, or validated by Staffordshire University uh, for, for its content. So going back to cloud computing here, um, um, GDPR, um, GDPR or the General um, Data Protection uh, Regulations, um, comes with, with its pros and cons. <laughs> um, let's say it comes with um, 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 uh, pros in terms of it ensures that um, um, uh, data, your data is, is secure, your data is handled um, um, with, is, is handled um, properly by, by, the, um, by, by, by the business that's actually holding your data. But it comes with some um, um, challenges when it comes to the technology. Um, let's, and, and, and cloud computing is one of them. So with cloud computing, where if data is not actually residing on the premise and is actually handled by a third party, okay, it brings challenges with it, okay. Um, and I'm going to explain what the GDPR is about very quickly, and then talk about the impact of GDPR on cloud computing. So there are four main entities or um, um, key actors in GDPR. There's a controller, 
uh, the processor data subject and um, uh, supervisory authority. So the uh, controller is actually the one who is, is the business who holds your data. For example, if, it's, um, if you have a CRM and you have um, customer data, so you are the controller. The processor in this in this case would be if you are actually ho if you are um, hosting your CRM system in the cloud or your services uh, services in the cloud, then the data the processor would be the cloud provider. Okay, the data subject is yourself as the, the customer, the you know who, who owns the data. The supervisory authority is the uh, government authority that makes sure that there is compliance with um, uh, GDPR. Um, so there are eight main areas in GDPR. Okay. Um, um, it's 261 pages, but eight main areas. So there's the consent notice, data governance, privacy by design, data subject rights, data security, uh, breach response to data transfer. Okay. But if you look at GDPR, it's all looking for enhanced personal privacy rights, increased duty for protecting data, mandatory breach reporting, and significant penalties uh, for non compliance. So what this you can see here that's a couple of examples of, of um, some penalties. I mean, to just show you that's reality. And you can go actually to this link where you can actually find a list of um, uh, all organizations that have been fined for non-compliance with GDPR so far. Um, so the impact on cloud when it comes to GDPR. Um, so as a controller, you are responsible for all your customers' data. Therefore, you need to know how much um, uh, do you trust the processor, the cloud provider? Um, um, do you know where your processors' servers are located? It must be within EU for compliance, GDPR. Does your processor comply with GDPR? Okay. Are their cloud processes secure? And can they prove this with third-party audits? Does your processor, the cloud provider, have the necessary certifications and is compliant? Are you the controllers? Um, um, a clear about data retention policies. Could the, could the processor make the data available at all times and delete it when needed? So these are the things that you need to ask the question before actually you adopt any um, uh, cloud kind of provisions. You have to ask these questions to the cloud provider to make sure that you, you, you are complying with your, um, uh, with, with, with the, with your customer's data or the GDPR when it comes to your customer's data. Um, so this is the um, um, again um, some some of the questions that as a cloud provider or the controller with the processor um, uh, needs to ask. So you need to update your policies. Uh, do you update your policies and procedures as as a cloud um, as as a cloud provider? Do you educate your organization? Uh, do you reevaluate your consents? You know, um, subject access requests. So when the, when 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 the when the uh, the subject or the customers, um, uh, the data holders or the data owners. Uh, decide to delete the data, or can you actually delete the data? Uh, so those are all the questions you need to ask between, you know, to, to you know, the, the, or a conversation that needs to happen between the uh, the controller or the business and the cloud provider um, um, to be able to determine whether uh, this uh, this cloud provision is suits you in terms of GDPR compliance or not. Um, very quickly here, governance, as I mentioned, becomes is, is a top kind of challenge now when it comes to cloud adoption for digital transformation. And therefore, we have looked into all available kind of literature on uh, data governance, and we have not found any kind of data governance strategy, especially for the cloud. So we have developed one, um, um, which you can see the details of here. Um, but this looks, this data governance is, is a strategy more than a framework. And this strategy looks into how to design, deploy, um, 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 and sustain uh, data go cloud data governance. If you govern, um, 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 data governance is different from data management, obviously. So you 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 do your data governance policies and procedures to actually um, determine how your data can be managed. Okay. Um, and for this data data governance uh, uh, strategy, we created what we call a maturity model to assess any organization's level of maturity in data governance, okay, from level 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 one to five. As you can see here, um, uh, level one is non-cloud data governance to so level two, initial cloud data governance, then moderate, advanced, and optimized data governance. And for this, we created a tool that can allow you to assess your own data governance if you're adopted for the cloud specifically, okay, and um, and then if you want to move from one level to another, it gives you actually a recommendation as of what to do 
to move from one level of maturity to another, which is becomes more of a, a recommendation system. So in conclusion, cloud uh, will continue to be a disruptor for digital, digital transformation and will be an integral part of every strategy. Businesses, especially SMEs, will continue to adopt cloud services and most will be running completely off the cloud, but off with one F, not two Fs. <laughs> um, GDPR compliance could be one obstacle to cloud adoption, okay? Um, but if you follow those questions um, in your conversations when you're trying to adopt the cloud, then you can actually minimize the compliance issues. More comprehensive cloud data governance strategies need to be developed and standardized as much as possible. Research and development will continue to drive innovation, okay? And more awareness campaigns on digital adoptions is needed, as we showed in the um, previous slides. Um, this brings to the end of the um, of the talk. But before I finish, just, uh, just um, uh, uh, a couple of um, um, uh, information that I was asked to actually convey to you guys here is the inter enterprise zone um, that we run in at Staffordshire University uh, is an incubation center and the launch pad. Uh, it provides some funded support for SMEs and access to innovation labs, works, work, workshops, facilities, students. Obviously, we're trying these days to run uh, some of these activities online, but when we are back um, on campus, uh, we welcome you to use the facilities. Uh, we are using the enterprise those to, um, to is more of an experimentation lab for companies to, uh, to use to develop new products, prototyping and process innovation and, and so forth. So it's concerned with digital advanced manufacturing materials. So if you're interested in the enterprise zone, please uh, do contact employers at staff.ac.uk. Thank you very much for your attention. I think I went um, beyond my time. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you. If you have any questions, um, please, there is, I think, on the um, right-hand side, there's an area where you can actually add your questions. So if you have a question, please um, put them forward. So, any questions, Anna? So, um, If you have any questions, I mean, I think on the right hand side, there is the um, an area there we could actually add your questions. Okay, so we've got a question here. You mentioned people, process, and technology. As a company with limited skills, is there anything in the university to help with um, this part? Um, yeah, definitely. We have um, um, we, in the university, whether Staffordshire University or other universities, um, let's talk about Staffordshire University because where, that's where um, um, I work and that's, I, I know um, the expertise that we have. Um, we have a number of uh, um, uh, professors in the university who actually specialize in these areas and they can actually help companies um, to um, uh, realize their digital transformation strategy. Um, and they can cover actually um, uh, the three axes of people processes and technology. So we'll be happy to um, 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 help on that. Um, if you get in touch with me after this um, uh, webinar, we'll be happy to put you in, uh, in contact with the right people for that. Okay, so um, that's great. Thank you very much for attending the webinar. Um, just to let you know, we are running next Wednesday as part of the uh, Wednesday Wisdom webinars. Uh, next talk on greener future uh, delivered by Dr. Eleanor Atkins, uh, which is part of the EU Green Week. So um, uh, please um, go to our um, events page on www.staffs.ac.uk and register for the event and enjoy it. Thank you very much. Thank you.